My people, it don't say to hey, no be smart, you know. So, all these things will happen for election. When we say a lot of people, the thing say the US people don't close their mouth, say they just come back to Nigerian citizen, not knowing that they get what they do for underground to make sure, say those people will do any harm for election when they, they use their power to oppress to make sure say they serve them their own punishment. My people not be smart, you know. Those who are where we say that they run, they go abroad all the time. Whether they run, they go US after they don't scatter their country, finish. My people, the US people don't finally take action. No. Hey, hey. If you like say the APC, APC, Nyash, don't they all too. My people not be smart, you know. What I don't pass, carry you. Hmm. The way this matter, they go like this, and my people, it go long, my people. If you like say the US people, toss, okay, since we be say, on we do this thing. On the feet say nobody get power over now. Okay, our country will be seen on the run, they come. We get the way to give on our own punishment. Because why? On I go scatter on our own finish on our country, run, they come our own country. If we scatter our own, on I go feel they see the country they come. <laughs> My people, as I they talk to now, so they don't place visa ban for the people where we say. They do any out for this election. The APC people, my people, not be smart, you know. Hmm. A lot of people they talk say, make the US people, may they bring out the name for the list. Mok we see the name for the, the name of the people where they the list. Mok we see the name of the people where they the list, oh, because right now, the United States of America, the United States of America said it has taken steps to impose visa restrictions on. Nigerian involved in undermining the democratic process during the 2023 general election. This was made no in a statement by the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, on Monday, published on the website of the U.S. government. America had, on January 25th, announced that it, has, it had imposed visa ban on individuals who disrupt recent election in Nigeria, my people, don't be smart. America, this one will be saying that they do. People they reason and say, <laughs> on a sure say this one, eh? This one will be saying we don't they see Tinubu they go to France. On a sure say not be because of this visa wahala, not be make them and not be make Tinubu they go to France. So because ever since when we say US don't announce, say they don't carry, they don't ban some people where we say. They they in charge of this uh, election of 2023 because of what they do when they don't ban uh, uh, ban them to come to their country. Now we don't the year say the APC people are so so France and London now they they go because all those England people they will never announce that see 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 say they ban uh, they ban APC people they ban the people where we say they they do something where it don't make sense during this election they not go do all those England people but. These U.S. people, they really talk, say, they more, they care about the citizen. And they know, say, it's not easy for them to just stop the inauguration like that. The only way to give the punishment, now to, for them not to allow them to come to their country. That is why they decided to take this step to make sure, say, hey, they know, to make sure, say, all the things where they know, they do, they know, that they see, they see the world is watching them. All right, my people, I go like me gonna go hear from me gonna go watch the video. Me gonna see what in the Nigerian government talk about the decision of the US government on 2023 election. What did the US government do to the APC people about this 2023 election? My people, I go like me gonna go watch the video. Me gonna hear what in the Nigerian government talk, my people. Let me start by asking you, first of all, your reaction to the announcement today by the US that it's imposing visa restrictions on select unnamed Nigerians for apparently undermining the 2023 election. It is a good news. Uh, it goes a long way to tell us that the U.S. actually stays true to its values and to the ideals uh, that binds countries, you know, as a, a democratic society. I, am, I particularly took uh, cognizance of the choice of words that Anthony Blinken used in announcing the visa restriction. And he said they are committed to deepening democracy and the rule of law. These are two things, democracy and the rule of law. And democracy is the government of the people, for the people, and by the people. It's all about the people, mm. not about few individuals, which Absolutely. is what has happened. And then uh, the rule of law is, the concept of the rule of law is entrenched in this doctrine that 
everybody is equal before the law, nobody is above the law, and the law is a set rule to which everybody abides by. It's not a law you set as you move. Like the way the INEC chairman, you know, he, he said this is the rule, and then got into the game midway in the match, he just changed the goalposts. And so uh, this is good news to us. We have made further requests because oftentimes uh, individuals and countries feel that visa restriction is not a big deal, uh, especially because they have alternatives to what would have ordinarily taken them to the U.S. But we have a deeper understanding of what that means. U.S. exercise what we call extraterritoriality for the most part. So it is not just being denied the access to the United States of America. Mm. Sometimes it, 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 set, it sort of uh, increased enhanced security in other countries to which they mm. are partners. Well, that would be more effective, wouldn't it? That's, that's exactly what they do. So for example, uh, if ordinarily, mm. uh, as a private citizen or a government official, you travel to the UK and you have a seamless security checks while you, while you go in, with visa restriction on you to enter the United States unknown to you, there are enhanced security checks that you find in our countries to which the American people have a partnership. Mm. But it also opens the person up and exposes that person to deeper background check in terms of the assets you have outside of the shores of the country, your communications and who you're communicating with, who are your medical service providers, uh, where do you go and whatever you do. So it is like the case of somebody who has been you know, placed under a watch list. Mm. That's, what, that's what it means. But there is even a broader aspect. If a visa is restriction is placed on me, by extension, my entire family is under surveillance, so to speak, because they have what they call uh, the, the web. Mm. When, they, when they conduct investigation, they have a web where one link to the other, the other one link to the other, and it is ex expanded. It will surprise you, and then with time, we will get to know individuals that are involved in it. Yes, it I, I was going to say, does it make a difference yeah. um, that, that the names of the people have not been made public. Yeah, it is, it is actually the law of the United States that mm. if a visa, because visa is a personal request, mm. unless America is taking certain steps specifically against that individual. And I think Anthony Blinken made it clear, it is not a visa restriction, it is not a sanction against the government of Nigeria or against the people of Nigeria. It's against the perpetrators of this election fraud. Mm. Has that not gone again? To establish what we have been talking about that this election was marred with irregularity this election was a broadway show this election is not something that in the eyes of the common man we would all live and translate that mm. story to our people it's the worst election in the history of the republic now in 2019 there were visa restrictions but never in terms of the magnitude as compared to this one mm. this is just the first step so people don't take it that, okay, what, 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 what does that mean? No, it's the first step. And this is how they progress. First, they place a visa restriction on you. Number two, they apply extraterritoriality in freezing your assets anywhere in the world. And number three, they place you under criminal surveillance. Mm. But we've heard reports that suggest that the imposition of these visa restrictions is not limited to one party. Right. But is across the board. Yes, correct. So it, it could easily affect the PDP, your party It could as affect well. PDP, it could affect Labour, it could affect anybody that is practically, not overtly, but mm. covertly, and very party, you know, actively involved in the either election rigging, promotion of violence, mm. or manipulation of the process. But it will interest you to know, and I can say that you can verify, much later it will come out. Majority of these individuals that come under this radar and government functionaries, people in positions of power that abuse the privileges and the position that they've had. It's not just ordinary individuals. Mm. So, for example, governors are involved, cabinet members are involved, directors of certain agencies of uh, government are involved, private individuals that act out as their agent in perpetrating this fraud are involved. These are the remote cause, mm. and then you can expand as you move you right. know, from but, that. But on. the PDP is involved, is it? I said it could involve anybody. Right. You know, it could be invo involve yeah, anybody. You're saying it could. It could, Does yeah. it? Because you, you, you mentioned the other people <laughs> right. who you seem to have information right. ab ab if, about, that it's roped them in. Right. Do you have information whether anybody in your own party is involved? I, I want to tell you, anybody can be involved if that person is actively involved yeah, you're in election can manipulation. Be. I'm asking you if any person is involved. <laughs> can I tell <laughs> work with the U.S. Embassy? Well, yeah, but you just <laughs> identified other people. But this is a fact who that you said are government functionaries. And you would see that. So obviously you have that information. I, 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 I plead the fifth. <laughs>
<laughs> I like that. Well, your party, the PDP, has suggested that the last eight years have been the worst of times for Nigerians right. in terms of rising insecurity, deepening poverty, worsening right. unemployment, increasing debt, yeah. and now weakening processes of democracy. Right after what many see as a flawed 2023 presidential election. Right. There's two weeks to go before President Buhari leaves office. Mm -hmm. What can he do now to shore up his legacy, or is it too late? So, well, uh, partially late, but there are some things he can do, especially in the area of uh, entrenching or strengthening the confidence mm. of the electoral body. You see, because... Right now, there is election petition in court, and there are possible outcomes, mm. one of which could be the ordering of a fresh election or runoff, whatever it is. Well, he can't do it until the courts decide. Is, so that, but the government has to be ready. Yeah. You understand? The government has to be ready so that when the court makes that decision, mm. and then they flung into action. The problem we have in Africa and in Nigeria is that sometimes, either tacitly or deliberately, we choose not to be prepared. Because I remember the INEC chairman said that uh, they were prepared even for a possible runoff. Mm. Now, ordinarily, the president, as I'm, I, I'm telling you, if he wants to leave a legacy, because with this election, he has to a large extent marred the legacy of electoral legacy. Now, in fact, he has invalidated the even signing of the electoral act because the whole essence of the electoral act itself was abused in this election. So he can redeem that by first sacking the INEC chairman. Why did I say that? Why am I saying that? Because if the court orders a runoff or a fresh election, not a single citizen in Nigeria will have confidence that this chairman will conduct a free and fair election. So, and by the time the president select becomes the president, whoever he appoints as the INEC chairman, assuming he removes this man, you know, it will take a great deal of you know supernatural intervention for people to believe that he will not influence that person but the president mm. Buhari can at this point ask the INEC chairman to go reappoint an unbiased person as the chairman of INEC then that person will begin the process of preparing for a possible runoff because there are other issues around disqualification which mm. of course the effect will be that the person who came second will be declared as the winner and the INEC will be asked to issue these are issues these are possibilities but the government must never be sleeping knowing that the case is in court and there are possible outcomes that will come this is one way by which you will redeem the already in my opinion right. well, well some have image. some have suggested that since the INEC chairman was the one who presided over the election he should see the court challenges through before he leaves office. So INEC is an institution. INEC was sued as a person, legal personality, mm. right? It is not just Professor Mahmoud. He has not been in court. And he has uh, been able to, according, I don't know if he's able to get that, to raise $4 billion, uh, to defend the case. I assume that if you have conducted, in your view, free and fair elections, <coughs> you probably should have legal department going to court because what what vested interest do you have other than to say i conducted a free and fair election but when you see somebody saying i need four billion to defend that it goes a long way but that's one number two in my view and uh, and, and quite frankly mm. is that the election can uh, the, the petition can successfully be prosecuted with or without INEC chairman as a person because INEC as an institution is the one that conducted the election. In fact, if you look at the electoral like for example, section 60 or 64 where it talks about power of INEC, the commission, that's what you know the law says you know, to review the result. Mm -hmm. This is a salient provision in that electoral act to which this man refuses and turned blind eyes to it when he was asked. And in the other elections following, like in the governorship elections and the mm. National Assembly elections where complaints were made about certain polling units and places, he exercised the same power he refused to exercise in the presidential. You saw what happened in Adamawa. You saw what happened in other places. He reviewed the complaint and ordered another election. It is the same law that applies to the presidential. When he was asked during the process, why don't you consider this and then address the issue? He said, I will just uh, announce the result and then I have seven days. Have we seen the seven days till today? So nobody, I don't even think that APC will even have confidence in him. That's the extent to which it has gone. So to me, the president, Buhari, has to be the one to appoint because he's leaving. Mm. Assume, the assumption is that he does not have a you know, vested interest. So President Buhari should appoint a new INEC chairman 
and rigid the commissioners if you want to instill the confidence that the Nigerian people will have, assuming that there is an order of court consequently for a runoff. Mm -hmm. run but without that, uh, when the order is made, the same people, you know, doing one thing over and over and expecting a different result is the definition of INEC. Mm -hmm. and, and beyond the INEC chairman himself, I mean, is there any role that you see other institutions of state playing whilst these election challenges and litigation is going on in a situation where, as we said, INEC creates the mess and the courts clean up that mess. Right. So we, we, the court is presented with the opportunity, as has always been, to not only provide check and balance to the other institutions of the state, but correct the polity. And over the years, we have seen how these courts in Nigeria have, in the interest of public safety, public peace, and national security corrected so many anomalies. Now, it is believed that the case before them is not just a case between political parties. It is a clarion call on the judiciary to correct. And uh, like I've always said, the facts are clear. The law is clear. We don't discuss the strength and weakness of them. Mm. The court will decide based on how you argue your matter. Yeah. But there are certain things that are not in denial. There are facts in, in law, we said, facts that are agreed by all parties. In fact, after our last proceedings, the court said the party should just go and agree on those things that are not contentious. So, for example, if you say, My people, now the video now on a new watch for this. So, on a see what it happened for inside the video. All right, my people, I go like to end the video for you. Make gonna let me know what it on a thing for the comment section. And if you want never subscribe, make gonna subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't go miss any latest gist we and they upload. And those of you that will be seeing, I never follow my Facebook page, make gonna follow so that you don't go see miss any latest gist we and they upload. And I'm about to come on our next time. Bye, guys. See you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.